Welcome to the eighth video in this tutorial series on testing your React and Redux web applications using Jest and Enzyme. Now in the last video, we looked at testing our connected components. These are components that are connected to our Redux store. And in today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to simulate events and then verify that the components we're testing have updated correctly. Before we get started writing any code, I wanna encourage you guys to check out the official YouTube playlist for this tutorial series. Of course, at the point of this recording, we are on the eighth video, so we already have a ton of content available on this playlist. You can find that in the description of this video where we'll post a link. Alternatively, you can search our channel, Simple Tut, and find that content and that playlist for yourself. And of course, as we go through the series recording more videos, we will post them on this uh, playlist as well. Another really useful thing for you guys to be aware of is that we do have an official GitHub repository for this project. And as we go through each video at the end, we are pushing and committing that code to this repository. So if you wanna download the code locally that we are writing, examine the code, run the tests, run the application, view it in your browser, then of course you can do. And finally, I wanna encourage you guys to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, like, comment as usual. That support goes a long way to helping us continue to bring the content that you enjoy. Now, especially if you guys have been following along with our previous videos, you will already know that we are currently working on an actual project. The aim of this series is of course to teach you guys how to test your React and Redux web applications properly, but of course, I've created a project that we've been working on throughout the series, and for that reason, it's something, I think as we are in the eighth video, it would be a really good place for me to do a little recap and just show you the wireframes that we've been working from and the application that we have built so far. Of course, if you're joining us and this is the first video from the series that you're watching, then I just, again, re really encourage you guys to go back, watch the first videos and, uh, and return to this. But of course, let's go ahead and just do that recap. So this is the wireframe of the project that we're working on. As you can see, we have a fairly basic layout. We just have a, a header section, and then we have a page title with a description. We have this uh, button, and when that button is clicked, it dispatches an action with Redux, makes an asynchronous request to an external API, fetches some data in the form of posts, and then of course we just render those posts out on the page. Now this is the wireframe, so let's go over to the actual application and look at what we've built. So as you can see, we have achieved that layout. And of course we can come over and click on this button to get the posts, and when we do, those posts are indeed rendered out on the page. Now let's go over to our terminal, and I already have the application running, I have my tests running, and let's just run our, our tests. Okay, so I'm gonna select A to run all my tests. And that might take a few seconds because at this point we do have 18 tests. And as you can see, they are all passing. Now, one of the main reasons that I wanted to go over how our application has been built is because in this tutorial, we're gonna go back and write more tests for a component that we've already written tests for. And that component is our button. Now, this button is a reusable component and it allows you, the way that we coded it, it allows you to pass a method as props, and on the click event, it emits that method to a parent component that once received can then go ahead and dispatch some kind of action with Redux. Now what we want to do is verify that on that click event, we are indeed emitting that function. So don't worry if you don't know how to do that because that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do in this tutorial. So let's just come over to our button component. Let's pull up the code and just check how this has been written. Let's just remind ourselves. Let's also open up our spec file and look at the tests that we've already written. So as you can see, if we look at this index file, um, we have this class. This is our component for our shared button. It expects two types of properties. One is button text. That is the text that will appear as the, the within the button itself. That's the text that you're going to see rendered on the button. And then of course we have this emit event and this is a function 
And of course, on the click event, uh, we will emit the, um, the, the, the function that is passed to it as props. Now let's look at what we're doing in our test file. So at the moment, we're testing our prop types. We're verifying that um, we are indeed checking for the correct uh, property types. And of course, we're also then checking that the component itself renders without errors. Now, the thing I want to draw your attention to here is this emit event, right? So at the moment, we are just passing a function. It doesn't even return anything. It's just a function. So what we want to do is simulate an event and check that this function is indeed called. Now something I'm going to post another link for in the description of this video is to the official documentation uh, of Enzyme and specifically looking at the simulate method that they provide. Uh, this is a really great uh, method that you're probably going to find yourself using on a regular basis because you are actually able to simulate a lot of different types of events in your tests. And in this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on the click event. But I do encourage you guys to come over and look at the official documentation because uh, they do provide some really great documentation. And especially when you're just getting to grips with uh, testing and simulating events, it can be very useful for you guys to check this out. So again, I'm going to post a link in the description of this video. Alternatively, you can just Google it. It's, it's not difficult to find. Uh, just look for the official documentation that Enzyme provide. So I don't actually need to look at this documentation. I'm just going to come back over to the code and specifically the uh, the spec file for our button component. Now, again, this is uh, carrying on from previous tutorials. So we already have some code written for this uh, this component. So we don't necessarily really have to uh, write all of this code from scratch, assuming that you guys have followed along with the previous videos in the series. We're just going to extend the code that we've already written. So the way that this is going to work um, is that just allow you to create a mock function. And we're going to pass that as props as this emit event. And what we're going to do in our test is we're going to find the button that renders uh, on the page, we're going to simulate a click event. And then the assertion that we make is that the number of times that the mock function we passed gets called should be the same as the click event that we simulated. So it should be one. So let's go ahead, implement that code, and hopefully it'll make a lot more sense to you. Okay, so at the moment in our test file for our shared button component, we have two describe functions within our main describe. The first is just checking our prop types. The second is checking that the component renders without errors. We have this before each where we're passing some props to our shallow render. And this is where we're going to make our first changes. So at the moment, we have this variable defined outside of our before each. We're going to create another one. So I'm going to say let mock function. I'm just going to say mock func. And in the uh, before each, we have uh, some props that we're defining and passing at the moment. For the emit event, we have a, a function, right? It doesn't actually really return anything or do anything. It's just uh, we're just passing a function. I'm going to delete this. And instead of passing that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, up here. Um, I'm going to assign jest.fn, which is our mock function. And I'm going to pass this or variable to this uh, prop that we are passing in our shallow render. The next thing that we need to do is actually simulate that ev click event and make that assertion. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new test. So I'm going to say it should emit callback on click event. And then we're going to pass our normal function here. And then what we want to do is actually we're going to steal some code. So we want to basically find the button that gets rendered. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that code. We can then grab hold of that button. 
and we're going to use the simulate method and we're going to simulate the click event and then we can make our assertion so I'm going to expect and what I want to do is I want to create a const here I'm going to say callback that's going to equal and we're going to grab hold of our mock function so it's going to be dot mock calls dot length and I'm going to pass this callback and then we're going to expect this to be one let's come back over to our terminal and you can see that our test is indeed passing so let's just comment out this simulate save that let's come back over to our terminal once that reruns you're going to see that the test fails because we're expecting a uh, the callback to equal one it equals zero so we know that this test is working and passing and that brings us to the end of this video tutorial i really wanted to introduce you guys to the concept of simulating events within your tests because they can be so important but again i really want to encourage you to follow the link that i paste in the description of this video to the official documentation so that you can go away and learn more about the different types of events that you can simulate within your test because they can be so useful and so important um, so let's go ahead and check in our code so i'm going to come over to my terminal do another git status as you can see i've been working on a a feature branch and I'm just going to commit this code so let's do a git add and let's do a commit and I'm just going to say that we have written a test to um, simulate click event on button component and we can go ahead and push that up so let's do git push origin and as usual um, at the end of this video tutorial I will create a pull request and merge that with master so if you do want to head over to our official github repository then by the time that this video is live you will be able to check out the code that we have written because it will be live on our github repository I just want to thank you guys for following this video tutorial and series. This series has been really successful so far and we are now approaching the end of this series. We have two or three videos still upcoming. Uh, the next video that we will be looking at is uh, how we can test methods on our classes. But at this point, the, the tutorials that we're doing are really covering very small parts of, of testing. So very, uh, So these are very short, sharp videos. Uh, but hopefully they're still as useful as ever. But of course, again, I just want to thank you guys. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. That support goes a long way, as I've said before, to helping us continue. But again, I just look forward to the next one. Take care.